When I think of fasting, I think of the verse about being still and know that I'm God. And there's all kinds of fasting. We don't necessarily uh, participate in fasting from food, but sometimes we, we have other types of fasting where we, we separate ourselves from uh, media and news and you know just being out in nature to where we can then f think about God and, and focus on God and, and how He's impacting our lives and the kind of messages that He might be trying to speak to us about through different things that are going on in our lives. I think if you look at me, you know I haven't done much fasting. And I do have friends who fast for different reasons. I have some friends who, as a matter, as a part of their um, worship, as a far part of uh, their uh, wanting to feel close, closer to God, will also fast. Um, I have friends now who, for medical reasons, uh, it's, they've been told that intermittent fasting is is healthier. I just haven't found it's something that has uh, been something I felt I needed to do or wanted to do. Well fasting I, I did. I feel like every year my wife and I we we sit down and we talk about something. I feel like honestly the hardest one was social media. Staying away from your phone nowadays it's we don't even think about it. It becomes a habit and you oh no, I did it again. And you have to start over and like really, uh, it makes you think and like that sacrifice makes you value every single bit. I, I did like a couple of times I've done like a 24 hour uh, fast from food with like students in, in youth ministry. Um, that has been a, a little while, but it was this focus that we all said, we will seek to be reminded that God is with us and that in um, when hunger comes, because you know where we live in the United States, it, I, I mean, I'm grateful for food in the day to day that God provides, but that's not what everyone experiences. So, the the intention was when we're hungry, we pray. We're reminded that God is the provider. I think it 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 helped me kind of refocus on God as provider. Um, I think it, we can take for granted the day to day of things we have like water and food, although we did drink water. But um, yeah, I, I think I'm used to some of the comforts of life, so fasting for 24 hours was not easy for me. And yet, I think it's necessary. Um, I've fasted from like social media as well at different seasons just to take a break. There's a lot of noise, and though I think it's a great means to communicate and celebrate and cheer on friends, um, I think there's so much noise and I, I seek to be focused on God, my family and others. And I think it, it can be a distraction. So um, there have been times where I fasted from that and then I come back kind of recharged, just investing my time, seeking to invest my time in things um, that are really worthy. Yes, uh, I fasted something before when uh... Like I give you an example, uh, when my wife is going through a medical uh, problems, I I practice those things because I know it says in the Bible that when you're asking for God and if you fast, you know um, God will hear your heart more. I don't know more because I know God will will hear you anyways. But it's a good practice as Christians to 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 do those things because. Um, it gives you your sacrifice. You 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 giving something out of you that you normally do. Hmm. Fasting. Um, yeah. I I fasted from lots of different things. Uh, uh, you know. It really. If there is a desire that I have that's out of control, uh, fasting is a practice that can really help me rein that in and really communicate to my body that my spirit's in charge the desires aren't in charge. So food, for instance, of course, uh, is if, if my appetite and, and hunger is driving me where I'm eating way more than I want to, uh, uh, I can enter into a time of fasting where I'm trusting God, I'm leaning upon Him and uh, His ability to meet my needs, and I'm denying my uh, appetite 
and by denying the appetite, I'm training uh, my body to be surrendered to my soul and spirit under uh, the headship of Jesus. I fast, uh, I try to fast at least uh, once a month for a day, and in that fasting, I'm uh, uh, focusing on feeding uh, my soul, my heart, my spirit, uh, and with the words of Jesus, with uh, the sense of His presence, um, my my hunger, you know, is 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 yelling at me, feed me, feed me, and I'm saying, no, uh, Lord, help me resist this uh, appetite, this hunger, this drive within me. Uh, instead, uh, to be satisfied in who you are and your presence with me. Well, welcome back to week two of Building a Resilient Faith. I hope last week's discussion on prayer encouraged you to spend more time in dialogue with God and showed you that it's not reserved for the elite. Prayer is for everyone. In fact, each week, our hope is that as we spend time unpacking these spiritual practices, you'll grow in confidence and see that you too can practice these spiritual disciplines. Today, we're going to dig into a practice that is quite countercultural. Now, you and I live in a day and age that is obsessed with more more noise, more apps, more devices, more streaming. And as technology has advanced, it's made everything easier to access. So if I want to check my email, I just need to open my phone. If I want to know the forecast, I just shout at Alexa from my couch. And if I really need to restock our family's supply of post-it notes, I can always depend on Amazon's two-day delivery. I can have pretty, pretty much anything I want exactly when I want it. But today, we're going to talk about the discipline of intentionally choosing less. Let's talk about fasting. Fasting is the intentional choice to go without something for the purpose of connecting with God. Fasting is more than simply stopping something. Fasting is stopping something for a spiritual purpose. Did you know that the Bible refers to fasting 77 times? As a point of reference, the Bible talks about baptism 75 times. We all know how important baptism is, but it's possible that we've yet to fully appreciate the importance and expectation of fasting in the Christian life. In Matthew 6, Jesus was speaking to his followers about the heart behind spiritual practices like prayer and fasting. He doesn't want us to be performative. He wants sincerity. And when Jesus was instructing his audience, he said, and when you fast. His presumption is that fasting will be a regular part of following him. Not only does he expect it from us, but Jesus did it himself. As Jesus was preparing for his public ministry in Luke 4, he fasted for 40 days in the desert. Jesus fasted in a season of preparation. In the Old Testament, Nehemiah fasted in a season of confession and repentance. He fasted so that God could have full access to his heart, reorder his life, and prepare Nehemiah for leadership. King David fasted to intervene because of injustice and, and ask for a miraculous healing. In the book of Acts, the early church fasted to prepare themselves for a life of ministry and to seek guidance when appointing new leaders. Fasting is when we intentionally give something up so that we can humble ourselves before God and He can have our undivided attention. In our world of constant noise and stimulation, this is an important spiritual muscle to develop. Now, the examples of fasting in the Bible revolve around food. People would intentionally not eat to remind themselves of their dependence on God and commit their attention to Him. But there are different versions. When Jesus fasted in the desert, he did so by not eating food, but he did drink water. After the Apostle Paul's miraculous conversion, he fasted from everything, food and water, for three days and nights. That's a total fast. Then in the book of Daniel, we see Daniel fast from certain rich foods and wines. That's called a, a partial fast. In our modern society, some Christians have taken uh, technology or entertainment or social media fast. Our devices and screens are constantly screaming for our attention. And by intentionally choosing to abstain from that engagement, it gives us more head and heart space to engage with God. 
All that shows us is that there's not one right way of fasting. The important thing about the fast isn't necessarily the type you choose. The most important thing is the reason you're fasting in the first place. It's about our heart. Fasting doesn't earn you spiritual bonus points with God. It helps you connect your heart with the heart of the Father. So maybe you're hearing this and wondering if this might be the right season for a fast in your own life. But well, let me give you a few great reasons to complete a fast. The first reason to intentionally eliminate something for a period of time is repentance. In week six of this study, we're gonna talk more about the details of confession and repentance, but for now, repentance is how we not only acknowledge our sin through confession, but also turn our life back to God. Sin can have a powerful grip on our hearts. And by creating intentional time and space to allow God access to our hearts, we're learning that it's His power that can break the grip of sin on our lives. So maybe your fast needs to focus on repentance. Another good reason to complete a fast is humility. If you're anything like me, you think about yourself a lot. You think about your schedule, and your desires, and your plans, and your problems. And then unless we intentionally set aside time for a spiritual purpose, we'll become extremely self-centered people. And when we choose not to eat food or put down our phones to give us space to instead focus our minds on the things from Philippians 4, 8, where the Apostle Paul says, fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Your season of fasting may be for the simple purpose of reminding yourself that it is not about you. Humility is a great reason to complete a fast. But how does, how does fasting, how does it help our faith remain resilient? Fasting is a proactively and intentionally choosing to go without, even when we don't have to. It's a reduction by choice. And when we complete the fast, it's a good reminder that we survived. We actually don't need all the extra to live. And someday, at some point, life is going to take something from it. It might be an employment opportunity, a source of income or a living situation. And in those moments, when less is forced upon you, the practice of fasting will remind you that God is what you need. You've lived with less before and can do it again. God provided for you then, and he will provide for you now. When we choose to live with less intentionally, it helps us build the character that can withstand life events that force less on us. In your group discussion, I hope you will be encouraged and inspired to begin the practice of fasting, to strengthen your resolve and remind yourself that God is our ultimate provider.